Carla, thanks so much for being willing to come and share your story with me. You're welcome. I'm really excited to get to talk more about it. So why don't you tell me about Dan and your marriage? Like, what were the good things about life and God at that time? So, I mean, we'd been married 29 years, so we had some challenges. Grow, mm -hmm. I mean, in our marriage, I mean, we definitely yeah. went through Desert Storm, Desert Shield, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. we um, raised a challenging daughter. And um, so um, th those were probably the bad mm -hmm. things, but, you know, some of that, because he went away in the first year of our marriage, mm -hmm. um, we we learned to communicate so he could call yeah. home and we would talk and just kind of really learn to communicate, which probably, I don't know if I was a great communicator, but definitely mm -hmm. of him being gone, I learned to communicate. Mm -hmm. He learned to communicate. Yeah. And a weird thing was we always checked the mail. I mean, that was yeah. just, I mailed him a letter every day oh. when he was in yeah. desert storm. And so we would just check it every day. We checked the mail. I don't, yeah. I'm not as good anymore. <laughs> You know, but email. even though I'm not even <laughs> expecting a letter from him when we would check it, we would just, yeah. we just did. Yeah. And, um, but no, we had a great marriage. We were, we lifted weights together. Mm -hmm. We walked together. We mm -hmm. were, you know, truly each other's best friends and we yeah. loved sports. So we, you know, watched yeah. hockey and we were big Zags fans and mm -hmm. Denver mm -hmm. Bronco fans, unfortunately this year. Yeah. But, um, yeah. so we just, I felt like had a great marriage and really communicated what we were feeling like you know, Dan would say, I never, I'm never wondering <clears throat> like where, what you're thinking. Like, mm -hmm. I know what you're thinking. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, we, you know, we were highly involved in Bethel since 2000, worked yeah. in different arenas. And, mm -hmm. um, I, in 2011 felt like God was calling me to a mission trip for our family. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I told Dan and he's like, are you sure? And I said, I'm pretty sure. And anyway, so just the way it worked out, I, when I had my first conversation with Dave Dawson, he said, he said, that's funny. We're getting ready to go to make a plan to go to Haiti. And I never yeah. said Haiti to him mm -hmm. and he just came up with it. And then, I mean, Dan just knew, but even from the day we were leaving, Dan's, you know, was saying, yeah. I don't think God's calling my phone. I don't think we're supposed to go to Haiti. And <laughs> I was like, I'm pretty sure we are. And anyways, it ended up that he got highly involved in high school yeah. after that yep. and just did a great job yeah. um, and loved it. You know, I don't right. think he regretted yeah. it, but no. yeah, know. super passionate about Haiti. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. So yeah. yeah, that's kind of our story. And we both did um, Bible study fellowship for years mm. and mm -hmm. I went back to that as well. So, you yeah. know, so we've been, you know, pretty Pretty involved with God and, you know, mm -hmm. tried to raise our daughter in that way yeah. as well. Yeah. So tell me about Dan's passing. Like, how did you deal with that? Um, and what did your relationship with God look like mm -hmm. in the middle of that? So um, I was super mad, I would say, mm -hmm. um, yeah. just because I didn't understand. I mean, we felt like um, we were super active and we were going to travel as long as we could travel yeah. until we couldn't travel anymore and not mm -hmm. realizing mm -hmm. that, you know, the trip we just took three yeah. weeks before he died right. was our final trip. Right. And I just was like, you know, we were walking five miles. I mean, mm -hmm. like, how mm -hmm. can he be sick and then how could he die? And yeah. so, but I did know that God was still mm -hmm. on the throne, even mm -hmm. though I didn't understand it. And I know yeah. that my husband's prayer was to, um, if you're going to take me, take me fast, yeah. because I don't want my wife and my daughter to see me suffer. Mm -hmm. I would rather you just take me fast and let's just get it over with. Mm -hmm. You know, that was his prayer to God. And I was like, yeah. that's a tough prayer, honey. And he's like, yeah. well, that's where I feel, what I feel. And so, yeah. so it's kind of hard. Like it was hard because that was his prayer and I totally understand it. Cause mm -hmm. we had just been through it with his dad yeah. and, you know, we'd seen other people just go through, mm -hmm. linger on and, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. so it was a hard prayer, but one that I knew was what he yeah. needed. If that was, yeah. if he, he was going to be taken, that that's what it needed to be. Yeah. Um, so I would say, you know, I did just reach out to my Bible and just kind of mm -hmm. started reading and just, yeah. you know, I mean, as hard as that was, I knew you know, like I said, I knew God was still on the throne and this, right. there was a yeah. purpose 
I just yeah. wasn't sure of what that purpose was. Yeah, because yeah, the, from the time he, um, like, wasn't feeling well, when you guys noticed something was off, what was the time frame from that to when he passed away? So, um, so when we were in Turks and Caicos, which was, like, I can't remember, like, the 11th of April or something, he noticed his arm was swelling up, mm -hmm. and they told him that he probably had, like, a a cellulitis or something. Mm -hmm. So they gave him an antibiotic and told him to take an ibuprofen. So he didn't, we didn't think anything mm -hmm. of it. And then we got home and he went to the doctors the first time on the 23rd of mm -hmm. April. And the doctor said, Oh no, you're fine. You mm -hmm. don't need anything. And he's like, okay. And then he went six days later because he was noticing like his mm -hmm. arm was going numb. Mm -hmm. And so when we went to, he went to the doctors that morning and she ran blood work and said her, his blood work was normal. Wow. And then that afternoon he called me and said, hey, um, I don't feel right. My head's not clear. My mm -hmm. legs sound, feel like I, I, ra I ran two miles, but mm -hmm. I didn't. And I said, well, did you tell the doctor this? And he's like, well, it wasn't feeling that way then, mm -hmm. you know? And so then he tried to call and they were out to lunch. And so we, he just said, just come and get me. And he goes, I can't drive. And so I went and got him and we went straight to the, they sent us to the emergency room. Mm -hmm. And from that day, which was April 29th, he died on May 12th. So wow. yeah, so t like 10 days. A couple weeks. Yeah, but he quit talking at 10 days. Mm -hmm. So then you're just making decisions mm -hmm. pretty mm -hmm. much. Yeah. You know, wow. so yeah. yeah, fast. Yeah. Super fast. That's hard. Yeah. 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 So how have you been able to find some healing from that traumatic experience? So, well, I mean, I would say I, I'm healing every day. Yep. I mean, yep. and I probably will be for the mm -hmm. rest of my life. Mm -hmm. um, but, I mean, I just think that, um, that, I mean, I do really believe that God's on the throne. And yeah. even as I looked back and look at, at some of the things that happened to me, mm -hmm. so, like, like I, I never had worked full time, never even mm -hmm. thought of it. And mm -hmm. I ended mm -hmm. up getting a job like 16 months before Dan passed. Mm -hmm. And it was a job with one of his friends. And Dan mm -hmm. was like, I don't think you could work for a better guy. And so yeah. that just gave me a lot of peace. Mm -hmm. And then when we got back from Turks and Caicos, he was like, I got to go to the office. And I said, OK. And he went to the office and because he owned his own business, he yeah. was like, Oh no, it's great. They they totally handled things while I was gone. I'm gonna go golfing, and I'm like, mm -hmm. okay. But that told me that I was gonna be okay. Like mm -hmm. I had to handle the business now, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I knew they had handled it. So it was yeah. things, different things like that, that yeah. I could look back and look mm -hmm. at the things to be grateful for yeah. that had happened yeah. before he died. Because I mean, that was the main thing I did was I looked um, in the areas that I could be grateful for. Yeah. And then just take it one day at yeah. a time. And yeah. I didn't, I didn't know how else to do it. You know yeah. what I mean? So I just, yeah. I did that. So yeah. there were lots of things that got pointed out to me mm. that God pointed out to me that right. you're going to be okay. You yeah. know what I mean? So, yeah. so it was, yeah. it was good. That is good. Yeah. Just little glimpses of yes. his faithfulness. Right. Even and, in the middle of the hard. Right. Even when you don't think that yeah. you're doing it, like one yeah. of the big things that I did, I'd start working for a financial advisor. And I told Dan, I said, we've never really had a budget. We probably should have a budget. <laughs> and I said, so I found an app that, you know, put us on this budget. And he was like, I waste so much money. And I was like, maybe. Mm -hmm. And anyways, but when he died, I had it all on an mm -hmm. app and I could see, mm -hmm. I knew without a doubt, like how much it cost me. And right. so when we were trying to figure things yeah. out, it was just super helpful. And I thought, yeah. I would have been overwhelmed totally. thinking yeah. about it, you know what I mean? But yeah. I wasn't yeah. because we had started that. Right. So, yeah. so yeah. it's good. So, so just good. little things like that. Little things. Yeah. 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 Tell me like what the role is that grief share has played in this journey. So for me, I um, lived by myself. Mm -hmm. My, our daughter, we have a daughter that was away at college mm -hmm. and, you know, you kind of want to hole up in your house. So for me, I think Grief Share gave me an outlet, a place to share what I was feeling and yeah. share what I felt. 
mm-hmm. and not really get um, and just kind of have other people listen. Like for me, mm-hmm. like I liked to talk about it and kind of just mm-hmm. clear, I don't know, clear my heart or clear because mm-hmm. part mm-hmm. of me was thinking, well, why didn't you notice this? Like, you know, like, why didn't you notice he was that sick? Mm-hmm. But um, so I think for me, that's what like Grief Show yeah. really did that. It gave me an outlet to do that. And plus, with the different weeks, there were things that I hadn't really thought mm-hmm. about. And mm-hmm. each time I go through it, I mm-hmm. see something different. Yeah. And so, you know, I think it's great to to get together with other people that are feeling your same feelings. Yeah. There, Some are behind you and some are ahead of you, but mm-hmm. I think it's a good arena to to be in when you're going through it. And mm-hmm. And more than that, you know what I mean? For I mean, it's a, just a great arena. Mm-hmm. So so that's what I like about it. Yeah, yeah. What would you say to someone that may be going through something similar? So I would say the first thing you want to do is is be alone. Like you want mm-hmm. to be alone. And I think that is like the worst place for you. I yeah. do think that you need to be in an arena like Grief Share or in... Mm-hmm you know, in it, talking about it. Um, Like I am trying to encourage my daughter to get into something because she has finally admitted that she hasn't dealt with Dan's death. And um, she's like, I just need to find something. Mm -hmm. I said, well, you know, you need to look around. But, um, you know, so I just think it's a great arena. I I mean, great for anybody dealing with any grief, whether it's, you know, your parents, a mom, a dad, or Um, your husband or a child or anything that you get to share your feelings and Mm. it's not like we're judging you or you're going to be judged it's just arena for you to get it off your shoulders and I know that there's lots of people I've talked to that Mm. say I just need to talk and so they um, that gives them that arena Mm. to talk plus Mm -hmm. it gives you information that you maybe didn't know was there you know what I mean so so much information yeah yeah. So just the community versus mm-hmm. the tendency to isolate. Yes. I think people yeah. tend to isolate for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. 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 Well, thank you so much for sharing. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs>